Hey everyone, welcome back to Addie P's Real Estate Tea, where today I just wanted to do a follow-up video on a video that I did probably about a month ago regarding should landlords be required to accept Section 8. Now, um, I thank you all who commented on the video and um, gave your opinions and so forth. I love feedback. I love comments. Um, I want to hear from you all. What were your thoughts? Um, and you delivered. Uh, so basically a lot of you said no landlords should not be required to accept section 8 so I did a little bit more digging um, to see what exactly had happened in this particular situation um, and just to give you a brief overview uh, the video basically was discussing a uh, ordinance that Kansas City was planning on putting in place to require landlords to accept section 8 tenants uh, because they were seeing a dip in uh, in landlords accepting section 8 and uh, there was a tenant advocacy group <clears throat> excuse me that had basically stepped forth um, the mayor was behind it and and everything and um, apparently uh, the vote is going to take place on January 25th it was postponed and pushed back uh, to give the landlord side of a group a, a chance to respond now I had the pleasure of getting some information from a, an agent there by the name of Stacy Johnson Mosby uh, she was so kind to give me a call back and kind of give me a rundown on what was going on um, which is how I know that the 25th is when they're due to uh, take a a look at this again and possibly vote on it um, but needless to say it was supposed to originally be voted on on the 14th and it looks like at that point in time they were going to meaning this tenant advocacy group and um, the mayor have a strong uh, chance of having this passed now um, they are uh, countering this this uh, landlord group uh, of folks basically saying that, um, hey, you know, no, we're not okay with being required to do this. However, maybe propose a landlord incentive program through Section 8. Now, um, looking at how Section 8 works and so forth, I don't have a ton of experience with it, um, just over the years, hit or miss. And, um, it's pretty much a, a program that subsidizes uh, housing uh, costs for uh, a tenant, uh, but they do not themselves, at least here locally from what I've seen, I don't know if it operates differently in other areas, but if a tenant moves in and destroys your property, then um, hey, you're on your own, just like you would with any other uh, a, a tenant. Now, obviously, there are legal ramifications that come with destroying someone's property, such as uh, going to the mag magisterial uh, courts, uh, you know, recouping some money that way, whether it's unpaid rent, whether it's just damaging property, whatever the case may be. Um, so the landlord still has to go through those set, uh, steps. However, I guess, um, you know, if you're in a program that is designed for a low income renter who needs help subsidizing and then to top it off that tenant has destroyed property, then you really aren't going to get your money back. So I guess that maybe is the logic and thought behind a lot of landlords saying, hey, you know what, I'd rather just not deal with it. Also, sometimes there tends to be um, a cap on rent. Um, that they allow as far as um, it goes geographically depending on what area you're in and a lot of landlords don't want to be restricted by that and lastly what I have seen is some landlords don't like the facts of the inspections um, some of the inspections um, don't necessarily mirror uh, what maybe a city code inspection would if you uh, are in an area that requires you to have a code inspection before you rent out to a tenant uh, so I think it really all depends again on your locality municipality uh, wherever the property is that you're intending to rent 
rent out. Now, my point being is, um, and this is just my two cents, take it, leave it, whatever. Um, I like the security of Section 8 when things go well as I'm sure most landlords would, uh, you are guaranteed to receive your funds, uh, you know, there at the beginning of the month, uh, without hesitation, you don't have to chase anybody around all of those things. Um, there have been some great success stories with section eight. Uh, what I don't like with this whole, uh, push of, uh, of a requirement is the business aspect of it. If I'm in the business of investing and renting properties in order to run my business, then I feel that that is being restricted, that that is taking the whole beauty and, uh, and joy away from uh, that entrepreneurship, that, uh, that portion of it. So I really feel that... Um, that requiring landlords to kind of, uh, you know, take this course of, of action in their business, because that's essentially what it is. They're running a business. They're offering housing to uh, individuals who need it. Uh, that That is, uh, is not really uh, a good look. Well, let me just put it that way. Um, so I think that, uh, this advocacy, this advocacy group that's here in Kansas city, Missouri, um, while I know that they are doing their best to help tenants, uh, really putting your neck on a landlord to accept a, a section eight tenant is, is not good. Um, I think that, you know, we all enter in things in our own free will, uh, and the same goes for a landlord and, um, maybe this should be, uh, you know, a boost to, uh, again, create this landlord, this landlord incentive program through, uh, within and like build it within section eight that maybe, um, if they get a rogue tenant that destroys property or whatever, that section eight offers to pay, um, a percentage of the repair costs, or they actually hire someone, bring someone in to do that, um, you know, on the landlord's behalf, um, since they have taken that step to do that or offer some extra, uh, financial security, um, you know, that, uh, that will help that landlord in the, situation, but, um, I don't feel that anyone should be forced. Any landlord should be forced to take a program, um, or accept a program. Now, again, I will say, I personally feel it's a good program. Um, if you, especially if you're just starting out in the whole, um, landlording business and your, uh, margin, your profit margin is really tight. You don't want to take that risk of, hey, you know, not having steady money. And I'm not saying that other tenants don't pay good, you know, that are non-Section 8, but again, it's guaranteed money. So that's my two cents, take it or leave it. Oh, well, just wanted to follow up with you all and give you all that, uh, that update. And hopefully I will uh, get an update and see where everything kind of came out in the wash. All right, guys, until the next video, you all have a blessed one. Take care.